Welcome to Montana Listens, the new talk show for the old Montana, where the spirit of the frontier meets the challenges of today's politics. From the prairies to the peaks, join us as we explore the issues that define our state. Through in-depth conversation, local insights, and your voices, we aim to bridge the gap between tradition and progress. Get ready to listen, engage, and shape the future of our treasured state. Tonight, we would like to welcome Ryan Hunter to the show. By night, he is a member of the Kalispell City Council, and by day, he works as a conservationist with the Flathead Land Trust. So, Ryan, I find it uh, bizarre. Um, I find it uh, unbelievable that, you know, this country has a lot of, we do a lot of studies and a lot of polls. And something I find very interesting, and I'd like to get your opinion is, 56% 56% of this country, when polled, believes we're in a recession. 56%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 50% believe unemployment's at a 50-year high. Wow. I know. Yeah. And this is like Pew Research. This is no joke. Yeah. Um, and I'm just like, you know, and you look, okay, obviously things aren't great for everybody, and they never are. Mm. But IRAs have doubled in the last four years. Mm. Um, homeowners... If, you know, they've gone anywhere. Homes have gone up from 20 to 50% in most markets. And mm. what's your opinion on America's, uh, like, uh, on this 56% think we're in this uh, inflation? What, yeah. Where do you think that comes from? Yeah, I, I do think it is the effect of inflation. I think it's the cost of living crisis that we're in. And that's something that has been building over time. You know, I want, I know people want to blame it on the current president, but yeah, yeah. I think it's kind of been something that's been building in our society over time. The cost of housing, oh, which yeah. you've talked a lot about, uh, is a big part of that. Huge. Yeah. yeah. The inflation uh, period that we were, were just coming out of is a huge part of that. And, you know, it's wages that are not keeping up with that cost of living. Right. And right. so people perceive the economy be, be bad because they're feeling that cost of living crisis, even though all the numbers are actually not, really impressive. Right? Yeah, I mean, the dollar strong is stronger than it's ever been. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing, I, and I don't see this the this administration, the Biden administration, really touting these numbers. I don't know if he can anymore, to be honest. I mean, I hate to say it, but he is old, and it is showing big time. Yeah. Um, you know, I think he's going to get hammered, but problem is with that is is you know i get yes inflation like dave fern said that americans would rather have higher unemployment and low inflation (laughs) i was like that's crazy but kind of true yeah Yeah. Yeah. like because the country isn't doing that bad i mean if you got a house if you got a job i mean you know wages have gone up they haven't matched inflation but inflation is actually coming down so these Mm. because like i own um four five businesses um, and I've seen my wages go way up, you know, because mm-hmm. of the cost of living here has gone way up. Right, um, right. I've seen the costs on a lot of my goods go up a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, you wouldn't believe the skis and stuff. The, the, how much, I mean, it, my margins are nothing compared to what they used to be. Food, I mean, of course. But food's starting to come down some, mm-hmm. which will only help that this the service industry, the food industry, because if, if these prices are coming down, because I'm paying those pandemic wages. I'm paying pandemic prices where we're not in pandemic business. You know, we were having fifteen thousand dollar days mm. where normally we're having two to three. Okay. So we're back to normal now. Yeah. But yeah. I got a GM making a great money. I've got my cooks are making, and, and I and I love it that they're making good money. Mm. You know, all I care is to be the highest paid person here, and I am the highest paid person by a couple thousand bucks, and that's that's cool. You know, <laughs> and anything after what I get gets goes back into this. But getting back to the general sourness that the country has on the economy, um, because if you look at it, you know, news, whether it's right or left, it's all kind of watched. You know, this country is half and half. But it always is alarming to me when a majority, and I think 56% is a pretty strong majority compared Mm -hmm. to this country. It really is, which sounds brutal, but it is, Mm -hmm. that they're in this thing where they're like, oh, it's so bad, but, but the numbers don't show it. And, I mean... Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, there is half, uh, you know, there's always going to be a fairly significant percentage that is going to perceive the economy based on which party is in the White House, right? And so yes. you get, you know, you get that bias 
hands yep. down. Oh, and right? inflation's going to fall, of course, before the election rate, and sure. rates will go down. Yeah, yeah you get that. Yeah. yeah, and then the other aspect of it is then inflation is cumulative. So even though inflation rate is going down, is the prices are still higher, right? They are. And they're, they're, you know, infl inflation is now at what three three percent. Yeah. So it's still growing, and it hasn't, you know, it's not like it hasn't gone down to, you know, the prices the haven't gone down to where they were like a year ago or two years ago two years or whatever ago, yeah. it is. Um, so you know, people eventually, if you get inflation down uh, to the target of two percent. And you get wages that are rising at faster than two percent. Then you're then you're, it then out. you're then people are going to notice that. It right? seems like we're on our way there. We're getting there. It, it seems that there. way. Yeah. yeah. Um, the uh, the one thing with you know the inflation and wages and all this um, and the job creation, like job creation, is still off the hook here. I mean, it's crazy how many jobs there are in this country and. Mm -hmm. And, and I'm not one saying that illegal immigrants should be coming over the border by any means, but there's a lot of jobs in America, you know, like to me, fast tracking, you know, some like I think the administration and the current administration suggested adding like, you know, hundreds of new judges and, mm -hmm. and, and, and doing this to because mm -hmm. we need employees really bad, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, and, it, it, and if if that could happen, I think things might happen, you know, faster. But obviously, nothing happens fast in okay. this country, and it's just yeah. not going to happen. You know, um, I don't know if I told you. Well, no, I did tell you that we did have somebody scheduled on the show, and I want to thank you for coming on. But it was Lucas Schubert, mm -hmm. and I don't. Have you ever met Lucas? I haven't met him. Have yet. you met Tony Brockman, the guy that? Yeah. He, so, and yes. I'm assuming you like Tony. Yes, I like Tony. Uh, he's a great guy. He is a great guy. I mean, what a hard-working legislator. Mm -hmm. 16 bills. No freshman's ever gotten 16 oh, bills. Really? It's yeah. never happened oh, in Montana. Yeah. That's how hard he worked. Yeah. And then he got the shit beat out of him mm -hmm. by an 18-year-old kid. Mm -hmm. Because it, from what I hear, Matt Regeer didn't like him. He was working with Democrats. Mm -hmm. Did something Matt didn't like. Yeah. So these guys put all their money and effort, I think, to prove a point. Even Because I don't know if he can beat Beth. I, I don't know. Beth is a strong candidate, you yeah, know, Beth Siebert, great. that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this district with the redistricting is probably a little less favorable um, to Mr. Schubert. I don't know. Hmm. But it's funny. He hung up on us last yeah. night when, you know, when we told him, he said, well, we don't Classic. have to do it tomorrow. We could do it tonight. We could do it Thursday or Friday, Saturday. We, got, we can do it all week. Like our studio is set up. We can do it any time. Hmm. And he just hung up. Hmm. And so now... You know, you, you know, and we're very appreciative to anybody that comes on. We, we, you know, I think, I think that any elected official kind of has an obligation to at least talk where they're coming from. But mm -hmm. I do think he's just too young, and I think that his advisors would say absolutely not. You cannot speak to anybody mm -hmm. about anything, you know. And, and that's, I, I mean, I was an eighteen-year-old kid at one point. Right. There's, there's youth, youthful ignorance or arrogance there. Yeah, <laughs> big time. Yeah. Well, you know what I found funny is I am one of the newer people that I stream my TV. I know people have been doing this for 20 years. <laughs> I had friends in Seattle, like with Apple TVs and streaming. I'm like, what is that? Like, you know, you don't need cable. Nope. I'm like, that's awesome. But so I'm finally that person. So on the Monday before the primary, dude, I saw at least a dozen Schubert commercials on YouTube TV. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a local Montana candidate advertisement on that to that point. He was very savvy with the online Wow, yeah. I know. And 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 he never had to come up with any substance. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like and that's why I really wanted to interview him. Yeah. We really wanted to talk to him. And you know, even if he doesn't want to do the show, I'd still like to run into him someday in public, you know, and mm -hmm. and just pick his brain and see where this kid's coming from. And honestly, I don't even know where he's from. And I can't find out where he's from. I don't Kevin, is he born and raised here? No. No, he's he born and raised in California. He, oh, no he gra shit. He graduated locally from high school, but yeah. I think he moved into Yeah, the high I think his junior, senior year, he moved to uh, Kalispell and went to Glacier. From California. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. That's another one. Steve Danes is born in California. Oh, really? Mm hmm Yeah. Well, that's not uncommon. A lot, of our, <laughs> a lot of our friends from the right are definitely not from here. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about the Tester-Sheehy race? Uh, you know, obviously it's 
probably the most important Senate race in the country, and it's going to be Kinda very weird. close. And, you know, uh, Tester, I've always been impressed. He pulls out these wins in Montana, yeah. and uh, he knows how to do it. So you never want to count him out. Um, you know, obviously, the I think going into the fall, um, uh, you know, he's, he's fighting some headwinds. And oh, yeah, a lot of money. Well, yeah. but he's getting a lot of money, too. This yeah. I heard oh, 400 yeah. million into this race. Oh, man. I'll tell you In what, Montana. I have an 11-year-old daughter. She knows it because she complains about the ads oh. she sees on all her, like, yep. kitty YouTube programs right. for she, he, and Tester. And, yeah. like, she, she can recite those ads word for word. Oh, that's sad. Because she's heard them so much. Oh, that's so <laughs> sad. That's so wrong. That shouldn't be happening, yeah, you know? know. Yeah. Like, my opinion is if she, he wins, Montana's done. Mm. I hate to say it, um, but I think it is because – We've all we've already given away our state to out of staters. Um, they can come in here with all the money they want or they have and do whatever they want. I mean, if you look at our governor, um, that guy's a billionaire, uh, a lot of money, and he spent the money to win. And, and it's sad that all it does take in, in America, and it is our system, um, love it or hate it, it is what we have. But the almighty dollar rules everything in a capitalistic society. It does. So you can buy votes. People want to pretend like that doesn't exist, especially people on the right. And I think that the people that argue the most are the most liable for what's going on. Um, if you look at back, dating back to the mid-70s, when states like Montana and Idaho voted Democrat fairly regularly, and then you had a lot of, you know, D.C. is pushing out these rich millionaires hmm. to run as Republicans to, hmm. to win because it only costs a couple hundred grand to win a seat in Montana or Idaho. Yeah, yeah. I mean, to me, I think people should, should should probably be a little smarter about, you know, how this process works, about how democracy is supposed to work, hmm. about how capitalism absolutely corrupts democracy. I mean, <laughs> it just does, and it's going to. And, hmm. and again, I'm saying it's our system. I'm, I'm not bashing it. I'm saying this is a system we have. But when money can just do about anything you want, that's what makes me fear about Sheehy and Tester race because I don't see Tester as a woke leftist. I don't. No, I've met him all. before. Yeah. I know plenty of people that know him that have known him for a very long time. He's a hardworking, regular person. Mm -hmm. um, that is my imp uh, impression and many people. But in a race like this where it's no holds barred, that's Sheehy's job, his campaign, is to mm -hmm. paint him as this leftist, liberal, woke. And I'm telling you, if you met him, I mean, He's not woke. No. He's just not. Yeah, and, yeah, and like I always say that maybe Tester on his advertisements, because you got, you know, she, he, American warrior. <laughs> That's what it says on his banners. Uh, that is insane to me. <laughs> like, I don't think I want a warrior as my politician. <laughs> I kind of want like a smart guy, maybe a farmer, maybe a regular Joe that I can relate to. I can't relate to an aerospace kind of guy or whatever it is he does, you know, like, um, but maybe Tester should just, put on his slogan American regular guy <laughs> you know well you know he's got he's got the ads with him and his tractor and uh, you know his combine out on his he, farm I mean you know he's he's got that he, he is Montana to he the is core, so I Montana mean. <laughs> I mean like yeah. you know who's not Montana to me and this might sound weird for people um, you know, like Don K you know he's the chair of the GOP we've tried to get him on the show and of course he won't um, because I think I'd love to pick his brand. Like, I, you know, it'd be great. I think I think he should be out in public and talking instead of just being on Montana Talks. That's the only time you'll hear any of these people is on, you know, Aaron Flint's show, Montana Talks. Well, you go online, Don K is, can't be active. I know he bashed me on my first election, got in the comment section of some posts. He does comment on, on Facebook, <laughs> I know. And he bashed you, did he? He did. Oh, and, like... <laughs> Why? He lives yeah. in Whitefish. You know what I mean? Like, he, uh, he has nothing to do with right. the city council of Kalispell. Yeah. But he's got an opinion, that's for sure, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, and he is, I mean, okay, he is the epitome of an elitist. He is an elitist. You cannot talk to him. You need to go through somebody to get to him, mm -hmm. even though my good friend and producer Kevin grew up with his son as very good friends. Kevin can't just go talk to Don. Mm -hmm. um, he is above that. And I think, to me, th that that's elitist. Hmm. But he is somebody that will paint 
a Democrat and all Democrats as elitists. And I think that's kind of funny. <laughs> I, I think it's, I mean, I guess it works. It works because Joe Schmo that lives in a trailer park that loves America is going to say, yep, all them Democrats is elitists. Even though the people they vote for have way more money. It's weird. Hmm. It's weird. I see Gianforte and Sheehy and Rosendale and Danes, and these guys are f mega wealthy. I mean, and yes, Tester's wealthy. He's a senator. He's been there a few terms. You're going to be wealthy that way. Yeah. And he's a landowner in Montana. That's all you need to know. Hmm. You know, everybody owns land as wealthy now in Montana. I mean, and these elitist, you know, people, I don't see, you know, what are they doing about it? I don't know. I, you know, I think Montana's going to keep getting more and more expensive. What do you think? Oh, yeah. And, uh, you and know, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. People are moving in. And, uh, you know, the thing that I think is sad about the elections uh, is it's it's so shallow. And, and yes. you know, it's all based on sound bites. And I get it. They, it's hard to get people's attention. They got busy lives. The last thing they want to do is pay attention to politics. and Or watch know, a show and stuff. I, I know. Yeah, I mean, there's so <laughs> few people that, that are going to engage at that level. And so, you know, but what's disappointing to me is we are bombarded by, by the ads through the Sheehy and Tester race, and I listen to those ads, and it's like they're not saying anything. I no. mean, it's just like sound bites and like uh, you know taking one little point and they're just hammering anything. it all. And there's no substance in it. Yeah, at you're all. right. And woke just, leftist. I hear that a lot. Like uh, a woke leftist. Yeah. And like it's 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 just obnoxious, and it's it's obnoxious. Um, it's, it doesn't help anything in our politics. You know, we. we you want to engage in politics you have to get to the level of that policy discussion what what are what is their vision for and for the country and once they're there they don't seem to change how it works mm -hmm. like isn't it funny like they all talk a big game and yes there should be term limits for sure like ted cruz the biggest joke in the world <laughs> always championing for term limits well because people are going to love that we all want that but he doesn't want that absolutely not you know I mean, if there's term limits, these people lose billions of dollars. Yeah. I get you, though. Yeah. It is what it is. I mean, jeez. I mean, it's a broken system. You know, you get in there, it and is. if you're you're one member of Congress, even if you want to change it, it's a it's a broken system that's hard to change. You know, and um, so I, it's it's uh, I, I I I can't you can't blame it on any one member yeah. of Congress. It takes them acting together and kind of pushing against the forces that are that are really corrupting it. You know, uh, oh. you know all that money, all the that money. special interest. Uh, you know, it, it would take a lot to push against it, and it would take the resolve of a lot of members of Congress. And you just don't have that. Right? You just don't have that. You don't. And Americans are gonna, I think, believe what they want to believe more than anything, which I find is sad. Um, like I, this, this, I have a story that this woman, an older lady, a friend of mine's grandmother, I bought a new pickup and she said, oh, that's a beautiful pickup. It's not electric, is it? I'm like, well, it's not, but I wish it was. She goes, are you kidding me? I go, oh, wait a second. I go, all right. And I want to be like, all right, old lady, settle down. <laughs> I didn't say that, but I go, let's take politics out of this for one second. Doesn't one small part of your brain think that Americans don't want to go to gas stations? <laughs> right. I go, because you know what? If an electric car is worse on the environment than gas, I'm going to buy one. Because to me, it's not political. It's not about the environment. It's mm -hmm. convenience, and America loves that. Mm -hmm. Remember your first cell phone? Oh, it sucked. Mm -hmm. Now you can run the world with your cell phone. So don't tell me that. They're, and, and people's impression now, because of news, and you get Google feeds of news and stories that contradict each other constantly. Mm -hmm. And this is confusing America as a whole, without a doubt. Like when you say people just aren't, you know, they don't care as much or not. Well, because how can they? When we're getting fed stories that just, that don't, you know, they contradict each other all the time. You know, Tesla's done. It's a horrible company. You watch Fox News. They're going out of business. Even though Elon loves Trump and he's moving out of California, they still bash the electric cars because the gas and oil industry must pay their bills. It doesn't make any sense to me because if I think you take politics out of it, don't people want to just not go to gas stations? Right. Right? Yeah, yeah it makes sense. Doesn't it sound like a dream come yeah. true? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, and you know, uh, you're talking about kind of news and information for people. I, I think about this recently that the, the Daily Air Lake, our local newspaper, they used to cover the city council every week and yeah, provide a summary. 
they lost for whatever reason. They you know had turnover with the reporters doing that, and I don't know if they're planning on hiring a new person, but they haven't had somebody to cover the city council on a regular basis for several months now. And so, so if, you wanna know, if you want to know what happened to the city council, you have to watch it on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, it, it will not get covered unless it's one of the big... God, and the, yeah. dude, there's like 40,000 people around in living in Kalispell and close. And on YouTube, if you look at the videos, just as many people watch Kalispell City Council as Whitefish. Hmm. 80 people, 100 people. Of course, Monday and Tuesday had way more. Yeah. But, you know, what... Yeah. I mean, this is. Sh I'm impressed that it's a hundred. It was a hundred people, to be honest. <laughs> I, don't, know, I, I don't. I don't think was there like was one. that many. I think that, like, really? when I was on there, I think there was only like sixty. Oh my god, oh my god, yeah. oh my like. So when we started doing the fish tank, our other show, we uh, we did the city council debate, and the city council debate two years prior that was at the city council chambers, I believe had seventy eight views. Hmm. Our city council debate. Wow. We had over five hundred. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So, cool. so if you make it fun, they will yeah. come. Yeah, that's yeah. what I think. Yeah, yeah. A little beer or something, you know. <laughs> and, and we're having a lot of fun doing it and getting the information out there for people in a different way. And I think there's some people that love us and some people that hate us for sure, you know. Um, but all in all, you know, we care about our community a lot, you know. And that's kind of why we got you on here too, because we know you do in a big way. You know, I think you're an advocate for a lot of the things that we do need in this valley. And I think you've got a lot of, you know, you got a tough road to hoe with some of these cats for sure. Um, uh, and I don't, you know, I don't know if you're at Liberty to talk much about, you know, council actions, but I remember, or I saw the, uh, you know, the editorial and it came up last night, I believe in the hearing that, you know, Sam Nunley works for the um, commissioners. And uh, but apparently he doesn't have to recuse himself from a decision on the warming center, even though the commissioners came out bl blatantly against the warming center. They don't want it, you know, but somehow, it, you know, it started anyway, you know, but but now, you know, they don't want it. Other people don't want it. And I don't know if you, you know, I mean, should he recuse himself? Is it something you, you're at liberty to say? Uh, you know, I leave that to the attorney, and it did come up last night. Sam Nunley, you know, it was brought up in public comment. Sam yeah. Nunley asked the city attorney and said, you know, is this, do I need to recuse myself? City attorney went through state law on the issue, kind of point by point, and asked him questions, and they both determined that he did not have to recuse himself under state law. So. You know, well, I'm I assuming that decision to the city attorney. And, and it's probably and it's probably that, you know, it's just it's probably because he just the county commissioner just put out their opinion on a matter. So probably not real binding in any way, I'm assuming. Yeah, I mean, know. Sam spoke to it last night that he doesn't nobody's pressured him to vote any particular way. And he you know, right, is and independent I see in his thoughts. And I believe I believe that's true. I don't think Sam is influenced by the county commissioner's position. So, no. Um, you know, I was, I was okay. And you think, what was the general feeling after um, it was granted 60 more days to go over it? I think, are you going to get more public comment on it and stuff, do you think? Well, you know, we'll come back in I mean, 60 days. you've had days. a lot of it already. Yeah, I mean, well, we've had a ton. And, and yeah, and I just want to be clear that, you know, state law does prohibit me from talking about the merits for or against the conditional use permit yep. until we have the vote. Um, that's so that everything's public and done in a notice public meeting and there's not kind of influence out. Well, it's important for people to know that, that, that there is a system in place to protect yeah. things like that. Yeah. yeah. So I can't talk about kind of merits for or against that, uh, conditional use permit for the warming center, but I can talk about the process. Yeah. Was and there a sigh of relief at the end of it at all? Um, I, I think, uh, I can't speak to, for others, but yeah. you know, that it could have gone another way. And yep. so I think going on for 60 days to try to resolve this without uh, it was too big of an issue to just decide last night it's too big yeah right i mean that's what that's what folks felt i think that's what at least that's what motivated the mayor to move that uh move that proposal forward and so we're going to come back in 60 days uh, there'll be another opportunity for public comment i'm sure we'll get lots you know it'll be another we were out of there like 10 30 or something last night um so uh it'll come back and and hopefully uh, the two parties, uh, the warning center and the neighborhood will be able to work something out yeah, that, yeah. uh, you know, they come back for us to consider and, and see some sort of progress on resolving some of these issues. In my opinion, like 
you know, not only the county, Montana as a whole has a lot of money. We're pretty good with money. Um, and I like to believe, and, and you know, it's uh, 21% of our homes are second homes in the whole state. 40% in Whitefish are second homes. So there is a shit ton of money here. I have no idea why money's even an issue for most things, you know. Uh, more of it, most of it's probably just personal belief, you know, where people, like I think some people just don't think people deserve a handout in any way. That's just their core value, their core thought, and I cannot discount somebody for that. Um, I can call them uncompassionate. I can call them a jerk. I can say whatever I want, but you got a core value. That's your value. It is what it is. But it seems to me, especially like we've got this marijuana tax now, new money coming in, and, you know, and it's a lot more money than we're used to, and it's going to the general fund, you know. Um, and a lot of it's going to Tallis Security to patrol the county buildings. And as a council member, I don't know if you're that in tune with that, with the county buildings. And, well, you know, do you, in your opinion, do you think it was necessary to actually hire a private contracting company, security company, to patrol? Do we have that many issues at our county buildings? Because I go to the DMV, and I've gone to the courthouse, and I don't see a whole lot of problems. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not familiar with the county situation and their buildings. I do know that in Kalispell generally, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, the chamber and a lot of local businesses have hired this private security because of the issues that arose around homeless, homeless individuals yeah. who were getting into properties and, and you know, getting into people's bathrooms and causing yeah. a big mess and all this stuff. And, uh, and even just, you know, people who are mentally unstable who are, um, you know, getting into confrontations with people and, and so on. And so uh, there was kind of, uh, uh, you know, folks hiring this private, yeah. these, this private security around town. And, you know, maybe the county kind of jumped on that. I don't know. But, uh, um, you know, and, and it's understandable. You know, people, you know, yeah, they people want to feel safe. They want people want to be safe. So, yep. you know, uh, and they, their private property, they're welcome to, to, you know, provide that security if that's what they want to do. I'm wondering if there's, like, is there a lot of t talk about solutions and ways to go forward? Um, you know, we do have a lot of issues facing Kalispell, and, and, and I think Kalispell is going to get really big here real soon, you know? And I, well, I can't, I don't think, I know. I mean, I mean that water tower is big. <laughs> That's big. That's no joke. That's mm -hmm. for a lot of people, you know, like. I've seen water towers like that in cities of 200,000 people easily. So we're looking like we're preparing for a, 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 a big future, you know. Um, and it's a lot of new revenue coming in. And, and I was going to, I wanted to ask you as a council member, and I, and I ask a lot of people this. Now, Montana's not going to have a sales tax. We're just not. They're going to keep just pounding people like me. I'm up to well over 40 grand a year in property taxes mm -hmm. on five properties. Yeah. It's a lot, you know, no more than that. Um, just this place alone is t over $20,000 a year. Mm -hmm. One property, not even an, well, it's about an acre. Here at Montana Listens, we'd like to tell everybody about our friend Amy O'Hara with Powder Hound T-shirts. Stop in at 505 Wisconsin Avenue and discuss your printing needs. So I want to touch on one more thing about, you know, the homeless and stuff in Kalispell. Yeah. Um, before we talk about other Kalispell and county issues. Now, you know, Talos Security has been hired to keep the homeless people away from the county buildings. Do you know where, like, where are they going? Like, they're, where, like, you know, I think to some people it was a good idea to say, well, let's just hire, like, the, the Chamber of Commerce, these businesses got together, so they don't want them around their businesses, the county don't want them around their buildings. So they hired a security company, and you know these guys are making good wages. I'm sure it's not cheap, but where are they shooting them to? Yeah. Are they shooting them to the guy that's complaining about the guy defecating in his backyard? Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's one of the struggles of I mean, being homeless is that nobody wants you around. Nobody. And imagine the impact that has on somebody's psychology oh, to dude. all day long be experiencing people saying, "You can't be here. You yeah. have to be somewhere else." And so then you pack up, you go to the next place, and you hear the same thing. And it's every day. Every single day you're experiencing that. I can't imagine the impact. And so you, then you get these guys who are blown up, and they're getting angry, and they're, like, disruptive. And it's like, well, yeah, put yourself in their shoes if yeah. they're experiencing every single day that kind of – like, I'd probably blow up too, honestly. Yeah. You know, I'd, oh, yeah. I'd get angry. Yes, you and, would. And, and these people don't have – 
the mental capacity most people have is obvious. Mm -hmm. And stress can be a killer on the strongest individual. Mm -hmm. Imagine on a weak-minded person. Well, people talk about addiction, right? And they're always uh, they're like, that guy's an addict, or he's, a, he's an alcoholic. That's why he's homeless. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he became an addict after becoming homeless because of the stresses yeah, of And the depression of it. People turn to alcohol and drugs all the time when life gets yeah. tough. Yeah. They do. And, you know, I'm guilty as charged. A lot of people I know are guilty as charged. You go through something tough in life. And like I've said, you know, to a lot of people, to touch on this, that when your lifestyle is such that you're used to it for so long, you're not, you're not expanding your knowledge. You're working in a fast food place. You're working at a grocery store. You're making minimum wage. But it's enough that you can have a life and you can afford your apartment. But within a matter of months... In, in, in not just Kalispell or the Flathead Valley, but all, all of Montana, in a matter of months, home values doubled, tripled, quadrupled, and your $500 a month rent went to 1500 bucks. Mm -hmm. And you have, don't have the capability of you know, pulling yourself up by the bootstraps, per se, and getting a better job, or just all of a sudden getting smarter. There's no programs to help people progress in any of this. Like You can't just go to Taco John's and then become a welder to make more money. Mm -hmm. You gotta know how to weld. <laughs> you know, you could kill yourself or other people. You know what I mean? Right, it's right. if you know if, if there was, in my opinion, if there's money into a program for FTCC to take these people in to, to learn trades, that that somehow you know, I don't know where the money would come from. But to me, that seems reasonable yeah. to, to train people. Well, a lot, a lot of homeless folks have jobs. They you're are, right. They are you're, employed. Dude, they're <laughs> dropping their kids off at school in the cars they're living in. Right. That is sad. Yeah. I don't think. I think a lot of us that have been here for a long time never thought we would see that in this mm -hmm. valley. Mm -hmm. I am. I'm one of them. Mm -hmm. um, I never thought I would see a person dropping their kid off in a minivan with coffee cups and toothbrushes falling out of the side of the door. Mm -hmm. I, that's sad. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is. But you know, again, if they're shooting them away, they're still going somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I think that this band aid of hiring a security c company is actually making the problem worse i mean it's it, it certainly just displaces the problem to another location and you know it's not it it's understandable for the folks with you know private property and and they want to protect that property they have every right yes but it's not it's not a solution you have to have not by any means you, the solution is to get people off the streets and into housing and when we talk about addiction and stuff a lot of people say well you have to you have to clean up. You have to show that you are willing to help yourself before, you know, we're going like to help. Like it's that you. easy. Yeah. I mean, you, you imagine, I, we're, you know, talking about kind of the, the addiction of people on the street. Imagine trying to fall asleep in zero degree weather. Dude. Right? Not going to happen. If I were trying, if I, you know, am unable to sleep because I'm, I'm shivering and I, you know, get loaded and pass out. That's the way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, easy. You, you'll get, you'll and, sleep through the night that and there's way. there's cheap <laughs> enough alcohol out there. You can do it. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, oh. people, the people don't think about that stuff. And then, so then they say, you know, the way people can get sober is if they have a safe and warm place to sleep at night, then they can at least start and to imagine the possibility of getting sober. And maybe somebody that cares yeah. about them. Right. You know, yeah. maybe not being shunned by absolutely everybody they run into. Yeah. I mean, that is, it's just, it, it's sad. And I think that's another, um, it's another casualty of capitalism. You know, we live for the almighty dollar and those that don't have it just aren't worth a goddamn thing. And that is sad. Um, it, it is what it is. Uh, I, I don't know. And, and let's talk about other problems. <laughs> Cause like water is a problem in Kalispell, and is it three city wells are, con are are is it? What did I read that there was? Is it three city water sources that that are are contaminated or aren't you know, up to par? What what's going on with the quality of the water in Kalispell? Yeah, because I, I think most of us look around and say we got the most beautiful, cleanest water in the freaking world, and here we got water problems. Yeah, I mean, so th th yeah, I mean this is obviously a serious issue. The issue is contamination of what's called PFAS. They're known as forever chemicals. Yeah. They're the chemicals that are put in things like your nonstick 
uh, pan. Oh, they, yeah. That, the reason it's nonstick is because it's got this forever chemicals on it. I've they seen are, all the documentaries on that. Yeah. Scary. Yeah, it's not it's not stuff that's I good don't for want your health. Teeth. You know, the research has shown that it's very, you know, very toxic, very bad for your health. But it's in pizza boxes. It's in, uh, you know, your popcorn pop bags that you put yeah, in the microwave. Right, it's right. in your rainproof clothes. It is absolutely everywhere. And so it it's has, in the lotions you put on your body. Yeah, it's, it's in all sorts of, pre you know, makeup has got it in it. Yeah. So it's absolutely everywhere. And so somehow there's some source that's gotten into, we have uh, two wells that have tested above the EPA, the EPA put out some limits and tested yeah. above the limits. And, um, you know, people freaked out nationally. Oh, yeah. How uh, often does it get tested? Like yearly? Well, so the testing of this particular, one of the things that's great about Kalispell is that we volunteered to test our wells for this chemical oh. and kind of in advance of like oh, everybody else. Oh, that's not else. a government mandate? It, it is now. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. I was say, Jesus. So EPA came out and, you know, said you have to test, but we actually, when we first tested, it was kind of like we, we were doing it voluntarily that, um, you know, the stuff's coming forward. We knew it was coming forward, uh, but we'll go ahead and test our stuff. And so we discovered uh, the stuff in our wells. I think you're going to see in the news as it becomes a mandate more, or you know, people. You'll follow see more the, of it. You'll see a there. lot. You'll see it everywhere. You will. Uh, I'm expecting. So you know, cities are going to be dealing with this across the country in a major way, uh, moving forward in the future. And we just happen to be at the forefront of that. Um, and so we have uh, these wells that we have to to address, and and uh, one of them particularly over the EPA limit that. We are now uh, looking into solutions like drilling a new well to see if that might resolve right, uh, Resolve right. it. We have put in place, um, I just approved this, I don't know if it's in place yet, but we've, we're have moving forward with purchasing a filtering system, a temporary filtering system until we figure to out- To use what we, the already existing source. Yeah, on this one on this well, one well is by FECC. And, and that could be filtered out? like. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, it could be largely like 90, yeah. 90 something percent. Okay. And it's it's like we're talking about extremely low levels, you know, because and it's because the chemical is toxic enough. It's like lead. You don't want any of it. Like right. any about is not good. Um, but the EPA limit is extremely low levels, and uh, so we have and we're you know a, a bit above the the standards, um, and so but. You know, what I tell people is you're probably being expo exposed to it at a much higher level by your nonstick pan that you're cooking in or the your fast popcorn, food container, uh, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. And the people, the other thing to consider is with Kalispell, our wells, it goes into, it all goes into the pipe together and it's being mixed with all the other wells oh, that don't wow. have it. So oh, it's diluted. Wow. Oh. So the level we have in that well is not the level that's coming out of your tap. Okay, because okay, they all get being, mixed together. Being so it's being diluted. So, okay. um, it is a problem. Yeah. We have to address it. We're working on addressing it. It's going to take time. Uh, but it's, it's you know, there, there are some circumstances, you know, details there that people should understand. It's not maybe quite as alarming as it might first right, appear. Right, right. Right. But at least it's worth paying attention to. Yeah. I read a story about two weeks ago, maybe you guys did too, about like 90, what are they called? PSAs? PFAS, PFAs, found in 98% of penises. Okay. Did you read this one? <laughs> no? Okay. I uh, I read this, and I'm like, what? You know? Um, and I don't know why. Is this a Joe Rogan thing? Are you no, it was about? not. <laughs> it was not. No. In fact, PFAs in penises. <laughs> You're doing a Google search. All right. <laughs> Microplastics discovery in penises raises erectile dysfunction. Okay. Yes, right. that's yeah. so. Well, there you go. That's the I mean, now, I, now I'm really worried. Yeah. I know. <laughs> that's what I'm going to tell my girlfriend I got. <laughs> Just kidding. She doesn't watch the show. So, now the water, the new water tower. How many people, that that, that looks like it's going to be serving the future of Kalispell for a very long time. Like, yeah. and that was... And I, I believe that money was approved during the Trump administration, if I'm not wrong. Do you know? Cause I think that is, there's infrastructure money. Uh, like six years ago, seven Biden, years. Uh, money went into the 
Okay, may, well, it, okay, so maybe, okay, so this I is, think, the, see, I mean, me too, I don't know. Well, I, I was told that this money was allocated six years ago. And then when yeah. they start working on it, there's a uh, President Joe Biden's infrastructure at work. Like oh, I'm like, right. oh, that's pissing off the valley. Well, I think All they, right. I think they got it started and approved six years ago, and then they are able. To oh, get, then they finally got the money. They for were able it. to get money through the Build Back Better. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Thank you for clarifying because I did not six years before my time on council. So yeah. I, right. I, I, <laughs> I mean, and you hear so many different stories. I mean, you just you don't really know. Um, but it sounds like. At least, I mean, you guys are working on it. Uh, it. It's it's just so hard for a guy like me, and I think all of us that live here and people that don't live here to read that uh, this beautiful place has water problems. Like when I moved to Whitefish, 1999, we rented a house on the lake for like 600 a month with four bedrooms. I mean, it, people are right now are wanting to kill themselves because they just heard me say that. But it's it it smelled. I was like. Oh, there's a hot tub here. And the landlord's like, oh, no, 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 that's the water. Hmm. I'm like, the water? It smells like chlorine. He goes, they put chlorine in the water here. I'm like, here? Where you can see the bottom of every lake? You know, it's like, well, yeah, there's a lot. Of, I mean, of course, feces and the animals, like, there's hmm. stuff that, and all the mining, I'm sure, the railroad, there's so much stuff in our groundwater that it, it's just not that yeah. safe. You I know? mean, any city is going to put something in the water to ensure that you're killing off bacteria and stuff and so yeah chlorine is the most basic and and kind of uh, probably cheapest too i bet yeah you know in terms of there, there's been some misconception about the availability of water in kalispell because we had a well a, a well that went down um uh became dysfunctional we were planning on replacing it and it, it became dysfunctional before we before got a chance did, yeah, to, yeah. and so there were water restrictions in the summertime yep. when people are irrigating like crazy and so and people thought it's because we don't have enough water we have plenty of water we just had assume. a well that go down we have like there is a we got more water than most people oh man we have an underground aquifer in the valley that it's got a ton of water so we've got plenty of water to last us for a very long time into the future. Obviously, well, we, we want to conserve water no matter what. Well, we, we could do. probably sell to Arizona too, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you know, we have the water. You know, it's a matter of the infrastructure and stuff, and and we are we have a plan in place and to keep up with the infrastructure with the growth. We are the fastest growing micropolitan area in the country. So right. We are growing fast. No. But, yeah. But I think we've done a good job with the infrastructure. To keep up with that, um, it, it, well, what are what, what are you doing to keep up with this gr growth? Because, like, and I've heard I've heard um, studies uh, that we could see by twenty thirty two hundred thousand people in this valley, two hundred fifty thousand people. Twenty thirty, you know, but yeah, you know, and it's like what? But if you look at how fast, if we're the fastest growing micropolitan in the country. Well, if you look at other ones that have had that distinction, yeah, they're in the hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah. And this is a beautiful place. I always thought having no freeway was going to keep me safe from people the rest of my life, <laughs> you know, but then the pandemic happened and then our airport got tripled, you know, and now, I mean, God, and honestly, I don't blame anybody for coming here because as sour as I get on this place, as expensive as it's gotten, there's still nowhere else I want to live. Mm. It's beautiful. It's a wonderful place to live, and uh, you know, I'm a I'm an outdoors guy to be around all the public lands and oh. and all the lakes and stuff. It's just it's especially in the Rocky it. Mountains. I mean, oh. nobody's got what we do. It's and, incredible, and it sucks because now they all know, you know. Yeah. But with all this growth, um, do you feel the council as a whole um, is doing a good job planning for it? I, I do. You know, I, I think one of the things we do well is planning for the infrastructure, the w water, the sewer, yeah, um, yeah. to the roads. You know, I know we'll talk a little bit about development coming up where roads is an issue. We, we do, there is an issue of, you know, we do a good job with city roads, but of course we're surrounded by Come. county roads. Oh, yeah. And we and have to deal not with with the state, with MDOT, with the highways. Dude, I lived on Big Mountain Road for 23 years. <laughs> right. Brutal. Yeah. So, you know, we don't have a lot of control over, you know, when it's somebody else's road. Yeah. Right? But yep. when it's a city road, we do a good job. We do a good job with the water, with the sewer. 
um, and we have plans in place to account for that growth and and uh, grow that infrastructure. So uh, I, I do think on the on those fronts we do. Do the work. commissioners work with you at all on planning for growth? No, they don't. Okay, <laughs> that was a dumb question. All right. Um, yeah, I, 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 uh, uh, that'd be nice. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm still still trying to figure out what they do. Um, it's all right. We're gonna have Randy here, Brodell, on our, in a couple of weeks. You know, we'll we'll talk to him a little bit about it uh, because I do think it's it's their place. I, I like, you know, I think to some people it's great. Like we get new restaurants. That's cool. You know, with this growth, we get different things. Um, but it's also really scary because it's impacting our way of life that we're really used to, and you've already seen it deteriorate. I mean, big time. You know, like. Mm-hmm. I hate to sound like, you know, this person that, uh, like, I live north of this bar, north of the entire valley. I don't have to deal with a lot of it on a regular basis, so I'm a little more out of touch. I have to go to the food store in Costco and buy supplies, and of course I got to go to Calstone stuff, but I can choose to go at 7 o'clock at night. I can choose to go at 8 in the morning, because between uh, 10 and 6, I don't want any part of that place. I mean, it's a major, major metro- metropolitan area compared to what we're used to. Mm. And when, like, Steve Bullock was governor, I had a friend that worked in his cabinet, and they came up with a climate refugee plan for Montana. Mm-hmm. I thought this was pretty genius. Mm. You know, at first I thought it was goofy, and I'm like, that's my liberal friend that works for <laughs> for Governor Bullock, and he's a goofball, and not much they do make sense to me, whatever. Um, but I was like, oh, this makes sense. Because, yes, it's 120 degrees every day in the desert now. Mm. I mean, it's getting hotter. Um, you know, and I, and again, this climate change thing, I absolutely despise its political. I can't stand it. Mm. What I say, if it's the endangered white rhino causing this heat, kill every one of them. <laughs> I'm fine with that. I completely am. And if it's cars and CO2, get rid of them. Let's let's have a pleasant life, because if this is going to continue, Montana is very smart for coming up with this climate refugee plan, because I think you I think we're already seeing it. Yep. A lot of people I know that are coming here are coming from Texas and Arizona, mm-hmm. you know, New Mexico, Southern California, where it is just too unbearable to live. Mm-hmm. And now we're in the middle of this heat wave where the lowest temperature we're going to see for the next ten days is ninety four, mm-hmm. and it's already been what five days in a row now of that. So we're going to be in one of the longer heat waves we've had. I, I would overall in the last decade, though, dude. I mean, think about it. Like mm. my first 15 years I lived here, it was beautiful in the summer, mm. 78 degrees, a little shower in the afternoon here and there, and you could golf every day and have fun. Still warm enough to use the lakes, but man, I think eight of the last 10 years now, maybe nine, we've had fires, we've had record-breaking heat. Um, it's just horrible. It's horrible. Um, but it's political. So I don't think anything's ever going to get done about it. I sorry, that was a little rant. No, about that's that. right. You know, it, it's a serious question. It's probably the most serious issue we face. Uh, I think in it our is. Society. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Real quick. Yeah. I totally is one of those people that ripped on inconvenient truth. Totally. Okay. I'm like, what horseshit. This, I'm so sick of us living in fear and these people pushing these this fear on us and this and that. So I watched it <laughs> about a year ago. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, and so I bashed it. I'm like uh, the typical Montana dude that's like, shut up, Al Gore. You have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. So I watched it about a year ago because it's hot as fuck. Okay, we'll have to edit that out for radio. I did it. Anyway, it's, it was, it's, it's pretty right on i don't know if you've seen it i have seen it I, well i watched it in 2004 so it's been a while okay but. yeah yeah 20 <laughs> years ago yeah. i mean it's amazing that the hurricanes the wildfires were losing towns my liability insurance here for this bar went from 9,000 to 19,000 last year everybody's insurance i know has doubled hmm. because 5, 10, 20, 30 years ago, we did not have entire towns being burnt down, making these huge insurance claims. Mm. Now it's really happening. Mm. And in Texas, of all states that denies all the climate stuff, they're being ravaged. They are getting the shit kicked out of them. 
And Governor Abbott still sits there and just, there's no way this is because of humans. I mean, even a guy like me, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm starting to pay attention to this because I don't like the heat. I just don't like it. You know, like I'm I'm looking at going to Ocean Shores, Washington Sunday just for the day because it's going to be 61 <laughs> degrees there. Get out of it's going to be 100 here. Yeah. It's going to be 60 there. I want to really do that. Well, you know, for, for folks who are kind of interested in this topic, there is a website that went up uh, within the last year called Living in the Flathead. And it's all about kind of that response, that climate resiliency, how to deal with kind of the issues that. of water, fire, uh, yeah. you know, dealing with wildlife. It's kind of like everything under the sun that, that can kind of relate to a changing climate and the impacts on, you know, our community. Uh, it's got resources there of how to approach it and d deal with it. And so that's a great resource and things like that are popping up, you know, in terms of you know, you talk about kind of vehicle use and stuff. I'm a big advocate for the only way we are going to, I mean, electric vehicles are great and, you know, hopefully we, we make that transition as quickly as possible. I oh, we will. We, we have no to. I mean, there's no doubt. Progress it's, happens. It's going to happen. You know, there's there's people who kind of bury their head in the sand and think it's not going to happen. Well, for some just, reason, they owe their whole life to oil and gas companies. I don't know why. <laughs> they, they're not invested in the stuff. I am. I own oil and gas stocks. I'm not dumb. <laughs> Even though I'd like to see it go away and have a better environment. I mean, just like during the pandemic, I invested a lot in Pfizer and Moderna and all these guys. You know, maybe even if I believed in it or not, I knew these guys were making money. And you got to have, you know, this is where I think the right, right wing media is doing a disservice to a lot of their people by telling them that this electric car industry is dead. There's, there's, I mean, in 10 there's years, money to be, be totally made. Different. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's going to be totally different. But, but, the, but at the end of the day, you still have to get people out of cars. You have to build. Yeah, you got to build ways to do that. You're you got to right. build communities, and that's why you know. Look at the trains in Europe compared to the trains in America. Yeah. What in the hell? What is wrong with us? Yeah. Well, we love it, our it, cars. It, it, Part of it is our development patterns, and that's why my role on city council, this is something I think a lot about, and this is where kind of I feel like I try to make a contribution, is getting those development patterns where, I mean, currently, you know, the way the United States has developed since, since, the world, since World War II, we make it almost impossible not to get around by car. We do. It's impossible. It, it's impossible. It, it's impossible. Yeah. I mean, where we live, and it, yeah, it's, oh my God, it is. You it have is. to build completely what I call complete neighborhoods, which are neighborhoods where you can get, you know, you can walk everything to your you job, everything you need within either walking or biking distance to be able, and it doesn't mean that you're, you know, you're going to do way with car. You want a car? That's fine. Yeah, you got to go on vacation. Get, yeah, you got to give people but, options. But make everyday life, around. I would love to not to have to use a car in everyday life. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Okay, this might be sound crazy. My solution to all of this is America is divided into 10 zones north to south. You get all your food, you get everything you need in 10 zones. So I'm not buying tomatoes from frickin' Florida. Hmm. I should be buying them from Arizona or Southern Utah. You know, like this is my, and I think that would help on the, I mean, why are we trucking things so far? I mean, why are we selling so much oil and shit to China? Well, I know, because Kevin used to work in the industry. They take the shit that we can't sell and turn into gas and they make all of our plastic, you know. Again, something we could probably do in locally. Whatever. I'm getting off the. Off. That, that's. <laughs> we can't. We got to talk about something more important. Like, how in the world do you deny Frank Garner? And <laughs> yeah. Were you one? Are you one of them that voted against it? I did it? vote against it. Oh God, yeah, no. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. So. But uh, there was a lot of community that didn't like it, which yep. they don't like a lot of things. Yeah. And so yes, there was very significant opposition to Which it. Which blows my mind because it's off 93. Who gives a shit? You know where that's going. It, there, yeah, and there, yeah, right. I mean, the, you know, the future probably is we're going to see a lot more development out in that area, but the neighbors obviously, you know, came in, which we see in the, before. I, I will give kudos to my fellow city, city councilors. The city of Kalispell has been good about not uh, giving in to not my backyard sentiment. I love that about Kalispell. I think yeah. you guys have done some incredible things on that. We, yes, we've approved in in the time. You've that approved I've, things that are necessary. Yeah, we've in my time on city council. I've been a little over four years now on city council. We have approved thousands of housing units. 
Oh, yeah, it's, it's that, obvious. It, yeah, I mean, we've approved a lot. And a lot of the driver of that is because of our housing prices and the and the crisis we have in, in housing in our community. You're being good stewards of the community saying, yes, we need these, because if we yeah. don't, prices are, who do we, what are we left with? Yeah, and I voted for the vast majority of them. But Except Frank's. A, and well, uh, yeah, and I, uh, you know, I do have standards. Uh, you know, there are things I will vote against. And so there's a number of issues with with that development. Um, you know, I you will always hear when there are neighbors who are upset about the development next to them, which is totally understandable. Yes. Nobody wants to see that. The NIMBYs. Yeah, the yep. NIMBYs. Uh, you know, they'll always raise the, the, the traffic issues, right? And sometimes the, the traffic issues, a lot of times, you know, it's like, they're just using that as an excuse to try to stop the project. Yep. In this yep. case, I think there were some legitimate traffic issues. Part of it was we talked about the county and county roads. Well, it's look a county at the road. baseball freaking field. Why is there not a stoplight out there? You ever leave a baseball game at night? Yeah. But it's a state thing, right? Count, it's state. Yeah, it's state. It's so state. Th th that was part of the issue, too. So you can't. So the state highway. The MDOT has triggers for when they put in a light, right? Yeah, they don't it's just decide. Be, it's traffic count, it's, it's accidents, tra right. it's all these. Like, like they told us at Big Mountain Road for us to get a light, like somebody needs to die, basically. I'm like, okay, well, we got to find yeah. somebody that's going to sacrifice because we need it. <laughs> yeah, because uh, this development on Tronstad, the Garner's development, uh, it was, um, you know, they weren't going we weren't going to get a light at that intersection until like half the development was built out right and and there's going to be problems at that intersection Holy well cow. before half of it gets built oh out, right god you know it would be a major it would be a major issue and you know we're trying to work out like how do you how do you mitigate for that until the light goes in and it was never never, never really seemed like a good solution there right that it was going to be a problem uh and and especially because you know, we have currently a right turn only uh, at that intersection. And so it forces yeah. people, if they want to turn left heading south into town, they go through the neighborhood in Ponderosa uh, to, to, to avoid that. And if you all of a sudden put a huge development in there and all that traffic going through the neighborhood, it would have been a mess. There was also an issue with the intersection on Whitefish Stage and, yes. and the safety there. Yep. And the fact that Tronstadt is a county road. now. The city regulations require that the developer, when they put in their development, they have to improve the stretch of road in front of their development. But that's it. And that's so the it. rest of Str Tronstadt Road doesn't get any kind of improvement. Oh, it'd be, yeah, that would be And horrible. it's a county oh. road that has no shoulder, has ditches on both sides, has no sidewalks. And Asking you put a hundred, you know, probably like a thousand more vehicles a day on that road. It's, oh. going, it's going to be a safety issue, right? So there were legitimate concerns there, but that, so, you know, that was part of it. Uh, and, you know, I would say the majority of the council that voted that down uh, were opposed to the density of it related to those traffic concerns. The traffic concerns were part of my concern, but part of it, and this is where I'm kind of unique on the city council, is it was a huge development, almost 500 housing units yeah. on 110 acres. That's a lot. It was all only single family housing development. And it was pitched to us as an affordable housing project. With workforce housing. With, with yeah. workforce housing. Now, there is no such thing as workforce affordable housing with 7% interest rates on mortgages, <laughs> oh, okay? Yeah. There isn't. And single family housing is the most inefficient form of housing you can build. It's the most expensive housing you can build. Yeah. So the point I was making with that development is, okay, there's traffic concerns, but the bigger issue for me is if you're going to have, if you're going to have a development of that size, you have to have housing di diversity. You have to you get have different types. Yep. You have to have some rental housing. You have to have multifamily housing. And that that's going to actually be higher density right you're going to get yep. higher density so I had a conflict there between the traffic and the density counts but also I will not support sprawl I will not support single family okay. housing at that Ryan, scale with no d housing real, real quick before Kevin but gets in here because mm -hmm. you talk about that my idea 
I think it's genius, but almost anything I do. And for one, Frank's just not corrupt enough to pay off you guys to get this pass. <laughs> I know, he's way above that. My thought is, especially even for whitefish, people are so dead set against letting anything be built over 35 feet. But these are the same people that want to protect green space. Why in the world are we not building 8, 10, 12 story condos with one half being affordable deed restricted housing and the second half million dollar condos with incredible views? Protecting your green space, fixing your housing problem, fixing your parking problem by dedicating three floors of parking. I mean, okay, I know this sounds crazy. I just sprung it on you. Mm -hmm. But this is an argument that I've actually started making with our city council. And some of them have started actually listening, saying maybe maybe they have been a little naive in, in this. Because you're not allowing this growth to go up. Now we're seeing... I mean, Kalispell, Columbia Falls, and Whitefish are all going to touch if we do not allow people to grow. To, and I, Kalispell, I applaud. You're allowing buildings to get taller now. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just that's just a food for thought saying, you know, hey, I mean, I, I, we got to protect the green space. I mm -hmm. mean, and I'm not the, a liberal hippie saying it because I like the view. Dude, I live, you know, up um, in the mountain behind here. I don't really care. But for the General Valley and the aesthetics, yeah, you want those canola fields. You want that shit. It makes part of makes this place beautiful. Well, and one of the points that staff, so part, you know, part of the thing with this development is that uh, it was really complex. A lot of details. The staff re report on it for the council oh, was, was huge, like right? it was like forty five minutes. Holy it was like one of the longest shit. staff reports I've ever heard for Holy a development. Shit. I don't. It, maybe it was like thirty. It was somewhere still, around there. It was it really. Like hours. It was really long. But the, one of the points they made during that presentation that really hit home for me, when you know the argument against it was the density, is you have it was roughly 100, it was like 110 acres or something like that, it, and the neighbors were arguing for because it had previously been approved for two acre developments, and two uh, acre lots, two acre lots, yeah, and the neighbors were saying we don't want this development, we want the two acre lot development, and. Uh, you know, the, the staff were saying if you developed at the development that it was approved at when it was in the county, you would uh, you would eat up a thousand acres. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, and so yeah. It, oh, yeah. At, at the density that was coming in at, which for me wasn't dense enough, we we have it at 100 acres. And so there was, uh, you know, there is a real connection between the density and the amount of acreage of open land that you are eating up. And my my job outside of city council, my day job, is with flat and land trust. I conserve yeah. open space, so that's really important to me. So There's you're going to help me build, man, build skyscrapers in the valley. I'm, I'm for it. You Good. know, I, I, I you know, it, and we don't need to go like ten story. I mean, that right. would be. You could do five stories. Yeah. Just do more of them. Yep. You know, around the community, and that's why, like a development like this, I, I think you have a mix. Have your single family. That's great. People want that. We yeah. should have that. But have some five-story apartment. We uh, need that for workers. With ground floor commercial. Yeah. I mean, if we're going to build out this area, I mean, the development's going out there. And it, you may not get much commercial out there because you're not going to right now. You don't need you it. Don't have the, you don't need it. Yeah, you don't have the demand for it yet. But put in two corner stores on the junction yeah, of the collector so into the development yes. and Tronstad. Yeah. For the necessities. That's, a, that's you get a yeah. big argument with uh, Tris or Riss. Riss, know, you, Riss yep. uh, what's her last name? Uh, oh, God, she worked for me, and yeah. so does her brother. <laughs> Getz, Getz. But they had a big conversation about sat – like, you, she went to Harvard for uh, community planning and stuff like that, and her big thing is satellite communities within a s within city limits. Okay. And then that's having corner stores, a little grocery right. store, a bar, restaurant, and, you know, c making it so you don't have to go all the way into town. You can stay in that for a little exactly. bit. Exactly. And that seems like an absolute perfect opportunity for something like yeah. that. And that's what I'm calling complete neighborhood. You know, yeah. uh, the, the, the idea that you have everything kind of in your neighborhood that you don't have to get in your car. The problem with this development, too, it, that, uh, that I really struggle, and it's with any development on 93 North, which is where a lot of the growth is going, and, and unfortunately I don't see it going in the right direction, is we're loading it up with development 
that is the same stuff we've seen, what we see at Hunt and Ranch, which people call Consumption Junction, mm -hmm. which is the commercial is centered uh, you know, along the highway and it's just commercial. And then you have this kind of single family only development that's kind of sprawling all over on the rest of it. And the only choice people have is jump in their cars, get on 93 and go to the commercial center. Clog it up. You're going, Highway 93 is going to be an absolute mess. If we continue is gonna in be, that direction. It already it, is. Yeah. We're well, getting a new Costco out there. I know. Well, see, that's the pro I voted against. I voted against that that commercial development. One of the things I've where is it? is that south of Ford? South of Ford. Yep. Okay. And it's like it's going to look like. Wait, is it the corner ranch? It's going to look like the stuff. It's oh it's, yeah. It's, before you get to the cemetery, the single story before big the cemetery. So between the cemetery sprawl. and oh, I thought it was the corner by Isinger. No, it's oh yeah yeah. Wow. It's, probably, it's right below. It's right south of Ford. It's going to be the same kind of single story box store sprawl that. And they're putting the shields in the old Costco, I heard. A we, shield. We need another one of those. Well, and especially if, like, you can't. I mean, Reserve hasn't moved it an inch it seems like since oh my god we don't even and, yeah. and well i mean and if they had if they have to cross the river still to even make that even a, <laughs> but yeah anyways i mean wow huh i mean but again i'm really glad that you're part of the council i do think that it's a solid council i think you're making good decisions i think that you've made these decisions against the nibbies you know not against but you've made it for the future of Kalispell because because you have to you really have to. I mean, and that's one thing you don't see whitefish do a whole lot. Um, they don't. Um, they kind of like I don't. I, I don't. I don't want to get into it because yeah. they're all my friends and stuff too. <laughs> so, but anyway, let's talk about something more important: the Kalispell Cruise. <laughs> so I wa I I tried to watch most um, about all. I wanted to watch mostly about the warming center. But I saw that Kalispell Cruise came up, but I, I didn't ac actually get to that because we were interviewing Tanya Horn, so I had to get into the comments because there was a lot of comments on the warming center. You know, yeah. that was hours of, of things I had to watch. But yeah. but the Kalispell Cruise, in my, from what I hear, out of hand? I think it's out of hand. I, I think everybody I've talked to thinks it's out of hand. Yeah. I mean, nobody wants people doing burnouts and wheelies and, and cause. I mean, this is a tourist town. Whether you like it or not, Kalispell, you gotta cater to these people, or these business owners lose money. Yeah. And from what I've heard, it's very unattractive what's going on to tourists and just locals that want to go to dinner. Yeah, yeah. You get tourists and say, "What the hell is this about?" <laughs> you know? yeah, right. I mean, I I live on Third Avenue East, so I'm like. Oh, so you're uh, right there. Uh, yeah, I'm like three blocks from Main Street. Oh. And uh, on on Friday night, I you you we are up until midnight. No. Listening to this, I mean, it's so loud. It goes that late. Yeah, oh, they're 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 out. Yeah, past midnight, and, it, and it's so oh. loud. And it, you know, and then they get, you know, they kind of kind of they're doing loops, and the, so they get around on the on the on the back streets. They're going mostly on first, but they'll come up third as well. Of course and, they will. And you know, some of these guys are you know tricking out their vehicles so that they're la as loud as possible. Oh, the, and as smoky as possible. Oh man! So I get those guys driving by my house. You know, and again, it was like midnight, two in the morning. That's it's dangerous. Obnoxious. It's and it's and it's horrible. Well, it's obnoxious without and, a doubt. Yeah, quality of life. It, I mean, it's just like horrible. And so I've been I've been frustrated with it for for years now. I started during the pandemic, uh, but I didn't want as a public official because it is popular, obviously by yeah by, you know segments of the community. Of course, I didn't want to come with like my personal gripe and be like, this has got to stop. That's not so, your place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. I'm holding on. I'm not going to do that. But we've been getting now enough complaints from the general community saying this is this is obnoxious. It's obnoxious. that I finally last night at the council meeting said, listen, is there something we can do? We've got to do something because this is just out of hand and it's close on a runway hand. at the airport for a couple hours on Friday night. <laughs> yeah. maybe. I mean, find some other way. Well, where I grew up in Wisconsin, it was very popular. Mm -hmm. The cops had to end it. The city had to end it. They had to. It was yeah. just too much again. You've got commerce going on. You've got things going on that, that and, and you also have emergencies that happen. And it's dangerous. I mean, they're doing things in their car that you know. I mean, fortunately, we haven't had a car that's kind of got lost control and like right. jumped the sidewalk and into a, the front of a business. But you watch it. The, some of the videos. Oh, it's bound to happen. It's oh, it's <laughs> bound to happen. Yeah. And you know, here's one thing I think, and 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 you know, and I, you, 
we have a problem here with um, a lot of it's respect, in my opinion. It's respect for your fellow man, and the, and these people that are doing this, they are doing it for the in their opinion patriotic duty to be Americans and express their free right to cruise. And, and you know, this is America first. This is we do what we want. It's America. We don't care about our neighbors, which I think is entirely wrong. And I make this argument a lot because we have a problem here in the bar with people putting their Zin packets everywhere under my tables in my urinals. I have to scoop them out of the urinals all the time. What's uh, a Zin? I don't it's, know a, it's a nicotine pa- oh, pouch, okay. pouch that you okay. suck on and it's okay. got nicotine in it. Right. And I said this to a very conservative friend of mine. I said, you know, one thing is you can bash all you want on liberals. Go ahead. I get it. Okay. They deserve a lot of it. But a liberal's never going to spit a zins into my urinal. <laughs> a urinal, a liberal's going to see that zin, and they're going to have a little tear in their eye, <laughs> and they're going to grab a piece of toilet paper and probably pick it out because <laughs> they know that's the right thing to do. And a liberal isn't going to put big smoke sacks on their pickup just to prove a point that they love go- gas and oil so much. Right. Um, so rip up all you want, <laughs> but I do respect liberals for that in a big way, okay. you know, because um, I do see that class of people caring more about their community and their surroundings. I really do. This is just an observation I have, and it makes me gravitate towards these people and their compassion. I see a place like Calswell losing that with the likes of Lucas Schubert, um, Braxton Mitchell, the Regeers. And, and I'm not sitting here saying any of these are bad people. They're people. They're, they're our neighbors. You know, we're, you know, they're our friends. They're our community. But... I don't see a lot of respect for your fellow man with the crews, with the Zins, with some of the language coming from some of our elected officials. Ryan, you're a smart guy. How do we fix this? That is a tough question. Uh, <laughs> and don't know, say firing lines yeah, and stuff, the, you know. But you know, I I, I think it's dialogue. Um, yeah, I think it's communication with each other. You know, it's you're not going to if if. The, the person you're pissing off is somebody you don't know. It's easier to yeah. it's easier to piss them off, right? Not care super that easy. you're pissing off. Super easy, right? just like the keyboard warriors Tanya and I were talking about. It's yeah. easy. Yeah, it's easy. So it's about uh, you know having that cross communication, stepping out of kind of your bubble, and interacting with people who have a different opinion than you, have a different lifestyle everything else you know i'm happy i would love to you know it may come up at the city council of folks who love kalispell cruise come and give their comments do why, they why why they do they is, love this is, is why there, are they doing it is why there an organizer behind it, it? Uh, i don't know i, I see I, yeah i don't know either I, I don't know i don't think anymore i think there was originally but i, th- I think probably did it now start with the organized. george floyd thing or something or in that era well, it was COVID. It was, it it was COVID. COVID. it was like everybody's locked at home let's get out and we can be in like our cars in our, in our cars yeah. Yeah, yeah which i love cruising i do think it's awesome like i was bummed out when they stopped it where i'm from like i was because but but i was a huge part of the problem man i had a suburban with house speakers in the back playing Metallica <laughs> as loud as possible with about a dozen people in my suburban. Yeah. And we and it was fun to drive up on the sidewalk and scare people. You know, this is right. the 80s. It was a little different. But, right, right. but like, it was like, you know, as an adult now, I'm like, oh, my God, was I stupid? And that was ru- – obviously, they're going to put an end to something like that. Right. And so you're in a tough position because you don't want to stop people from having fun. None of us do. Right. Um, just like Whitefish Lake Protection, uh, the Lake Protection Committee or whatever it's called, like they really want to stop the fireworks on the lake. Oh, is that gonna people are gonna be pissed? <laughs> you know what right, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. but their argument makes sense. So, what do you? Th- where? Where? What direction are we going on? Like, how? Where's your? Where are your conversations about the cruise at right now? You know, we just started. You just I, started. I, I asked the the city manager to look into what other cities have done to deal with. You know. Oh, they just outlaw it. Yeah, that's and what they do. I they mean, see your car more than twice on one road within like ten minutes. You get a fucking ticket. Yeah, <laughs> I could see that coming, and I'd probably support that honestly. Uh, you know, I as it, I don't want to prevent people from having. Fun. Well, you're hurting their freedoms. Yeah, <laughs> I and mean, that's what it's going to come down to. People can find other ways to have fun, and I think you know, like your youthful stuff. If you were introduced to the little old lady who you're like 
blowing by with your loudspeakers and everything else, and right. the fact that like how annoyed she is and how it disrupts how it's affecting her life, her life. How it affects her life. Maybe you'd be like, you maybe know what? you would. Okay. You know? So I think that 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 dialogue. I mean, pe- you know, these folks are having fun. I get it. I mean, I was there too when I was a kid. You know, I was. I don't want to get into the stuff I did. Yeah, but, me neither. Yeah, but I wouldn't have this show. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You know, but uh, you you have to put yourself in somebody else's shoes that that's being impacted and well, be like, is I it think, worth it? I think in today's day and age, honestly, this sounds sad, but I don't think that matters what other people think. I think, and I'm going to say it, because of the Trump presidency, because of this whole arrogance by the people that f- believe they can do whatever they want now, whatever they can think, whatever they want, they 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 can act however they want. It is their right to do whatever they want because they are an America, American, and it's America first. This is something that I think is going to cause the great decay of our society, without a doubt. It already has, in my opinion. It really has. I f- find myself as a pretty centrist guy that is fiscally conservative, like a lot of people say, socially liberal, like a lot of people say. I own multiple businesses. I can't be a complete liberal. <laughs> I shoot my, you know. But, uh, like I said before, you can say what you want about liberals. They're really not causing a lot of harm in society, man, uh, in my opinion. They're not the ones that are doing a lot of these things that are pissing off regular, everyday Americans. And I think you're seeing that problem getting worse. And I think in Cal Spell is like this microcosm of that, that part of America that has this attitude that I'm an American. I'm doing what I want. I don't care what law enforcement says. I don't care what my city council says. I don't care what my commissioners say. I don't care what anybody says. I'm cruising, you know, and, I, and I'm doing this. And I'm pissing people off because it's my right as an American. I want to say to those people, you're, you're, you, you have a right as an American, but you have a duty as an American to be courteous to your neighbors. Hmm. I, I think you're right that there's been a definite decline in civility in our society Huge. over the last several years, and we have to move away from that. It's, it's, and how? I, I, yeah, like I said, I think it's the dialogue, um, and uh, you know there is kind of the the national narrative that is setting a tone that I think has been very destructive, uh, and that needs to change. I mean, we saw it over the weekend with uh, with the attempted assassination yep. of Trump. Uh, yep. You know that is a product uh, probably of of the divisive politics and well, or the deep state. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got always got to say that. I mean, we we need to move away from it and uh, you know get to a better place. And obviously, uh, it's going to be. It hard starts to with do. Civility, civility, and I think dialogue. And I think to a lot of people, that's just not in their vocabulary. I think that we have developed a society that is so incredibly self-centered and self-righteous that I don't know. And I'm not the dumbest guy in the world. I cannot figure out a way out of it other than what you just said, dialogue. Mm-hmm. You know, sitting at a table. And, and maybe it starts in Kalispell and our commissioners. You know, maybe maybe somebody like, you know, the fish tank hosts an event where we all get together and talk. Mm-hmm. And, and let's talk about our differences, you know? I mean, so. On your way out to the Montana Tap House, swing into Dire Need Cannabis for all your green needs. So anyway, we're talking about um, initiative CI-126, 127, and the abortion issue um, that all garnered enough signatures to qualify for the ballot. But now our Secretary of State, Christy Jacobson, is saying that these all these um, um, signatures are invalid because they didn't vote in the last election, <laughs> or maybe two elections, okay? I mean, what does it say about the state of our government here in Montana where they've lost already a minimum of 18 lawsuits. Like, you know, I'm not sure how familiar you are with how the legislative process works, you know, um, here in Montana. But back in the day, you used to go to legislative services and they would, you would draft a bill, they would clean it up and tell you if this is submittable or not. Because if it's not constitutional, why submit it? Mm-hmm. Those days are gone, Ryan. No. Now you can come up with anything you want and submit it and then they can vote on it and pass it. So then, it al- then if somebody doesn't like it, they've got to raise the money to have a lawsuit to beat the state. Now the state is, I believe, 0 and 18 <laughs> on a lot of these bills. Yeah. That is not a good track record. Mm-hmm. 
but they're still portraying themselves as you know they're you know they're doing their job they're 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 government for the people um when you lose this many lawsuits and you pass this many bills you know with a super majority that get defeated in the courts and of course um our government says the supreme court is the problem so the, i don't know if you heard they wanted to call a special session to make the supreme court bipartisan oh, um yeah. or, or i mean partisan that was a, a call to a special session it didn't go anywhere thank god mm -hmm. But they're going to try this next session for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking with redistricting, re redistricting, it might not happen that that maybe they won't have that supermajority. I'm not really sure. But what do you think about these initiatives, ex explicitly 126 and 127, about this voting? You know, in your primaries with with no labels and and the popular person getting the vote, like. Well, like, what, what do you think about these initiatives? Yeah, I mean, and in fact, you know, this is Frank Arner, yes. the guy that you absolutely hate and deny his project. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> He's behind this. Yeah. Um, do you support this? I do, absolutely. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. And well, because I don't think you're extreme on the right or left, and this is probably why you support it, just like I do. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and Frank Garner, for the record, I think he's a great guy. Uh, okay, even I, I didn't support the project that he was hired to be the face of, even though it wasn't actually. So uh, it's Sanju you hate. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, no, I definitely support this initiative. I'm glad Frank's behind it and pushing. It. He's been doing a good job, and uh, you know, it's it's they are measures to take reduce the extremism in our politics yeah right and and we could use a, a lot of that um, oh my god you know it you you have you a primary that. system that only kind of the the most committed partisans are voting and getting th their candidate it's eight percent of the electorate decides who wins an election right when i found that out because we had frank tom and rob all organizers of these initiatives mm -hmm. on a show last winter and I think it was Tom Jacobson he said it. he goes um, eight percent of the electorate decides who we vote who yeah. I'm that's like, not right oh <laughs> god that's so far <laughs> from right. Right, right it's and it, it and you know that shouldn't that's not liberal that's not conservative that I mean it's just it there's right or wrong here and what you see is like Don K is very against it because he's worried that if there isn't an R next to a name, that person might lose. Because he is telling you, I, and every Montana voter, that he knows that we're all stupid, very stupid, ignorant, if you will, that we will, we don't, we will not look into a candidate. We only want to, we, if we see the R, we're voting for it because we're in Montana. I think that is shitting on people. I do. You know, I think that opinion, that you know, that, that position on this, I think, is despicable, you know, and, and I see through it, but unfortunately, I think voters don't see through it. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll listen to the extremes because that's kind of what people want, but. Yeah, they, they look at the party narrative, and I mean, when I run for city council, city council is nonpartisan, and I, you know, I appreciate that when I go to the door, you know, people can't determine whether or not to listen to me based right. on a party label. Of course, so, beautiful. Right. So they listen to me based on what I have to say. And it turns out that, you know, when I talk about the issues, and I, I've been listening to the community and I am coming forward with ideas that address the concerns that they are raising with me. And so it doesn't matter I what party you're from, I'm getting support from the voters of Ward 3 because they like what they're hearing. Right, you know, and, and they're not worried about party they're, labels. They're not looking at the party label because they're not on the ballot uh, in my races. And and that's really refreshing. And I think that's where CI 126 and 127 really, they really kick this into gear of, let's get back to normalcy, let's vote for the right person, let's, let's deal with the issues in front of us instead of making them political. Because here's a study that I read that I think is absolutely amazing. It, it might be one of the most important things that I've ever read that has changed my political views for the rest of my life, that 100 women were interviewed and questioned about topics, 10 topics, and these were conservative women. Conservative women agreed with, 100 conservative women agreed with 100 liberal women on nine of 10 questions, hmm. helping the homeless. Um, universal health care, all these issues. Abortion was the one they disagreed on. Hmm. And because of abortion, 
100% of these conservative women vote Republican, hmm. even though nine out of 10 issues they sided with liberals. Hmm. Wow. wow. That is wow. You know, mm -hmm. that is. And so, so if you can take, you know, that out of the equation, the party, because this is a party thing. So you see an R, you know that person's pro-life. So you're going to vote for them, even though they don't want to help anybody. They're against deed restrictive housing. They're against all this stuff. But because they're, they're pro-life, they get their vote. Hmm. That, to me, is, I mean, that's, it's horrible. Hmm. I mean, it is, hmm. you know. And so now that we have these initiatives coming up, and, and, uh, and they have more than enough signatures, even though the Secretary of State's trying like hell, hmm. you know, and it's the whole administration, you know. Right now, Montana's in a weird-ass place, you know. We've been purple forever, and we've got along really well, and, and we don't anymore. So now they're trying everything they can. Like I said, 18 lawsuits. It, it, that, that's last check. It's probably well over 18 by now because it seems like it's happening every day, you know? Yeah, it's, but it's legislation as virtue sing signaling for, you know, politicians, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter if it actually becomes law. We want to just send the signal to our voters well, that, you know, we, we hate the same thing. And what do. happened to <laughs> our Constitution that people, we, Montana is one of the best state constitutions in the country. Everybody knows it. States are jealous of us. But now we have a supermajority trying to take a lot of that away. That blows my mind. And when the Supreme Court doesn't agree with them, they want to change the Supreme Court. They want to make it bipartisan. You know. And I'll tell you, I, I mean, it, if it wasn't for our Supreme Court, um, Montana would be a way different place right now. You know, and I think it's smart by Frank. It's because Frank is a conservative. He's ran as a Republican. He has served as a Republican. He's been a chief of police at Kalispell. The guy has done amazing things. And I have never met a person that's ever said a bad word about him hmm. until this. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. 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 You know, isn't it weird? Yeah. Like, because the Republican Party has gotten to this point where they will not associate with Democrats. You know, I mean, you know the story about. Um, Tony Brockman why he lost mm -hmm. you know like mm -hmm. the Republicans put all their money into that kid to prove a point because Matt Regeer did not like Tony Brockman mm -hmm. and Matt's the Speaker of the House mm -hmm. and Matt proved his point in a big way because Tony got slaughtered mm -hmm. um, and now it's up to the voters of the Flathead to you know or of Evergreen of that district you know of the Green District I like to call it you know it's it's so funny they got like 30 dispensaries you know <laughs> right there you know it's like go ahead and incorporate that you know that you're, you're, nothing's gonna happen until you do mm -hmm. but if Kalispell and you're on city council I understand will not allow dispensaries in Kalispell much like Billings will not allow dispensaries Yellowstone County sells more marijuana than any county in Montana Oops. and Billings does That's not right. allow dispensaries in the city limits yeah. That tells you something, mm -hmm. that around the entire city is surrounded by dispensaries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're making more money than anybody in the state because they got North Dakota coming, they got Wyoming coming, and of course they have Billings coming. And what city has the highest crime rate in Montana? I don't know. Billings. Billings. <laughs> and they don't allow dispensaries because yeah. dispensaries, if they did it, would increase crime. That's their <laughs> argument. Wow. Yeah. And Billings up until about four years ago, had whorehouses still, <laughs> massage parlors, <laughs> Asian massage parlors. You know, I did. I, w I was one of the votes. You investigated to one of those? Oh. Oh, well, I know. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> I voted to allow for the dispensaries in the in the city. I was one. Of oh the, yeah, uh, I know you did. My minority vote there. Very the minority. Side. But I do. But I do. You know, believe in regulation. You know, I I don't want to see them everywhere. I want them right. to first. You well, know, you see what's happening. It's horrible. Missoula is now capping them. Yeah. Actually, liberal ass Missoula is like, okay, this is enough. Yeah. Whitefish, liberal whitefish, this is enough. Yeah. You know, and my friend Mike was gonna open one right on the corner, kitty corner from like Bulldog, and it's like, dude, stop pressing the issue, you know. <laughs> and of course he did, and of course they said, all right, no more, you know. And which I agree as a as a dispensary owner, yes, there's too many. I mean, you know, and yes, too much competition is a bad thing, but competition is a good thing. We're now it's too much. I don't know. We gotta have at least a dozen here in Whitefish. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure, but it's a lot. And I do know the sales have gone down and whatever. It is what it is. But back to the initiatives. Um, you know, they both of them are going to qualify. I just read today um, that the Secretary of State's argument was just bunk and stupid. I mean, mm. yeah, can you blame anybody for not voting in the last election or the last two? I can't. Uh -huh. 
I mean, you shouldn't lose your registration, your, your voter status, because you wouldn't vote for Clinton or Biden, Mike, or I mean, uh, Trump or Biden, because it's going to happen again. I mean, I'm not super stoked on the upcoming election, are you? No, nobody <laughs> likes the candidates. Nobody know. does. <laughs> you got dead grandpa and old grandpa, or crazy grandpa. <laughs> dead grandpa and crazy grandpa, that's what you have. And that's where we're at. And, mm -hmm. and again, where Frank's coming from and these initiatives, it's showing that this two-party system isn't working. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's working for the corporations. It's working for capitalism. It's working for, you know, America, capitalism. I mean, our government is our corporations. It, it is, you know. And what's great about a place like Kalispell and Whitefish and Montana in general is, is we're still not there. You, we see people trying to get us there, but I still think we got enough regular people and cool people and people like you, people like Tanya Horn. Like, Tanya Horn is honestly an amazing individual. Mm -hmm. I have I don't know if I've ever met anybody that I can respect as much as Tanya um, when I first met her I said well this has got to be tough you, you got to be a liberal she goes absolutely not <laughs> like she was pissed you know <laughs> like okay all right I, I, mean, I should have known you definitely got the conservative look but but anyway I hope these initiatives do pass I mean I mean or I mean I know they're gonna be on the ballot I think people will vote overwhelmingly in favor of both of them. I do. I think that Montana's no different than Kansas and other states where abortion's been on the ballot that men and women, I mean, think about this. Men don't want to see it illegal either. <laughs> like, especially men like Donald Trump, you would assume. <laughs> right. I mean, millionaire playboy from New York. How many has he had? Oh, my God. But how phony have we gotten in politics, you know? I mean, you know, De Menendez just got charged guilty yeah, on all counts. Right. Yeah, yeah. And he's so, resigning from the Senate. Yeah. Oh, he is going to. Yeah. He does. Oh, good. He has announced, yeah. You know, but that's what a Democrat does. So from being a centrist to a guy that wants to hear both sides and be a part of both sides, I have been leaning left ever since the Al Franken thing. Where Al Franken left the Senate, as he's one of the smartest people in this country, in my opinion. He is a very smart person. Mm -hmm. He left because of a fun picture of him looking like he's grabbing boobs on a woman, but the Democrats are like, no, we, we can't have that. What do the Republicans do? Hold my beer. George Santos, welcome in. <laughs> welcome. The biggest liar we've ever had. And then the second biggest liar is our president. Well, you know, like where, you know, this is where we're at. I guess it is. But I do think these initiatives will change it in Montana in a big way. I think they've helped Alaska, Maine, and California. And these are states that are either conservative or liberal. They've both passed these same kind of things. And Montana for the most part has been in the middle and for us to pass this and have a new way i think it opens the doors for independence i think it opens the door like for well for a lot of things like we we're seeing a lot of our rights being taken away and and, and you know when when our public lands seem to be the most important thing we have right you just mm -hmm. talk about loving the outdoors and mm -hmm. like how all of us really love that stuff tim she he charges like twelve thousand dollars to hunt on his land did ted turner ever do that Again, Turner's a liberal. Okay, you want to bash on liberals and you hate them so much because they're so bad. Why is a conservative charging 12000 to hunt on his land and Ted Turner don't give a shit? And he's the biggest landowner in Montana. I don't know. So, you know, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, but, I, you know, I, I love that uh, access to our public lands and preserving our public lands is a key issue in in yes. the senate race and has been for multiple and elections be. and it should be especially in montana well and i think yeah. there are some hardcore conservative people that that will probably vote for ten tester like they have in the past because they do, i think that deep down they know he does care you and, know. and 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 how does a guy from minnesota care that much about montana and our public lands is bipartisan like it, it doesn't matter everybody loves the you know our public yep. lands in montana and and they should and oh i see totally gay people wearing rainbow t-shirts enjoying the land just like i do hunters in their camel and their mossy oak gear <laughs> i mean it is you're right bipartisan, completely yeah. bipartisan <laughs> man yeah well is there anything else you'd like to say about the state of Kalispell, montana and what we're dealing with here uh gosh i feel like we covered a lot tonight and uh yeah, i think we yeah, did yeah. i think we and uh so when is your term up uh, you know, it was just up. I won re-election uh, last, last year, yeah. and then you know, so you got four was, more. There was some question as to whether or not I was legitimate because of the county <laughs> screwing up the. Uh, that's the right, the votes. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I know, I thought that was funny. <laughs> Kalispell, above all, <laughs> makes the same mistake everybody else seems to be making. I thought that was funny. Yeah, so fortunately, I didn't have to rerun my race in the spring, so I was able to 
Let's good. Make, so make you've got four more years. we got yeah, four more years of Ryan on our yeah, side. Yeah. That's good. All right, Love good. it or not, you're, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're stuck with me. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot, Ryan, man. Yeah, Thank you. Thanks. We'd like to give a huge thanks to our biggest sponsor, Tamarack Brewing, for keeping Ed properly hydrated with his favorite beer, the Hat Trick. Stop in in the lakeside and tell everyone hi.